Hi, I'm Akhilesh from Ashwatastro. In the series of the graph lectures, today we will discuss about how to find if the given directed graph contains a cycle. To understand the concept of uh, cycle detection, you should first have gone through the DFS algorithm because the DFS algorithm in its entirety has been applied here in finding out the cycle in the given graph. Let's take a scenario. Suppose there are two graphs given here. The above graph contains the cycle and the below graph does not contain a cycle. To find if the given graph contains a cycle, we need to take the status array and according to the status array, we can find out if there is a cycle in the graph or not. The above graph contains five vertices. So let's take the status array of size five and let's initialize all the elements of this five size status array as zero or the false. The different indexes in this array or the status array is denoting if the given vertex has been visited or not. Let's start our tool from zero. And since we are starting from zero, we will mark this as visited. There are various connections possible from zero, which means we can go from zero to two. Hence, the status of two also has been marked as one. From two, I can go to one. So the status of one has also been marked as one. From one, I can again go to zero, which already is one. It means we have come back to the vertex from where we have started. It means there is a cycle in the graph. So you can very well see that from zero to two, then two to one, and then one to zero, there is a cycle. If I start my tour, not from zero to two, but from zero to three. So let's take a fresh data array. The size of the status array is five. All the indexes of this array has been marked as zero or the false means that these vertices have not been visited yet. Let's start our two from zero. So the status of vertex number zero has been set as one or true. From zero, we have a connection to three. So we will mark the connection three as visited. And then from three, we have a connection to four. Hence the status of vertex four will be marked as one. And then from four, we have a connection to zero and zero's status is already one. So we have come back to the vertex from where we have started. It means there is a cycle in the graph. Let's take the scenario of the graph, which is the directed graph, but does not contain a cycle. So we are considering the second graph on this page. This graph also contains five vertices. And let's take a status array of size five. Let's mark its the status of all the vertices as zero, meaning that these vertices have not been visited. So if I just form the adjacency list for our convenience, then you can see that from zero, we have three connections, one, two, and three. Then from one, we have two connections, three and four. From two, we have a connection to three. From three, we have a connection to four. And from four, there is no vertex connected. If I start our two at zero, the status of zero will be set as one. From zero, there is a connection to one. So the status of one will be marked as one. From one, I have a connection to three. So the status of three will be marked as one. I also have a connection from one to four, but we are uh, taking its pending. And then we are going to three vertex, which has a connection to four. So its status has been marked as one. From four, there is no other vertex connected. So since we have to backtrack, we will have to backtrack. Hence, the status of four will be marked as zero again. So you have to remember that while backtracking, 
you will mark the status of the given vertex as zero or false. So you are backpacking to this state where you have already seen all the connections from three. So you will again backtrack. So, but before backtracking, you will have to set the status of vertex number three as zero. So three was called from two, uh, sorry, three was called from one. So coming back to one, we already have seen the connection three from one. We now have to see the connection four from one. So let's go to four and mark its status as one. From four, there is no more connection. So you will have to backtrack. Before backtracking, you will set the status of vertex number four as zero and then backtrack to one. So from one, you already have seen all the connections. There is no progress possible from here. So you will mark the status of one also as zero or false when you will backtrack. So one was called from zero. From zero, you already have seen the connection one. Let's see two. So if you explore two, its status is unmarked. So let's mark it as one, it means visited. From two, there is a connection to three. So let's mark the status of three as one. But there is, uh, from three, there is a connection to four. So mark its status of four as one. From four, there is no progress possible. No connections are there from four. So you will have to backtrack. Before the backtracking, you will have to set the status of this vertex as zero. So four was called from three. So go back to three. And there is no more connection possible from three. So mark the status of three as zero and backtrack. From two, uh, from three uh, or the three was called from two. There are no more connection from two. So mark the status of two as zero or, or false and backtrack. So you will have to come back to vertex number zero because two was connected to vertex number zero. There is one more possibility from zero that is three. So three can be visited and its status can be marked as one. You are coming to three. There is a connection four from three. So mark the status of four is visited or uh, true. And then you are moving to four. So there is no more connection possible from four. So you will once again have to mark the status of four as zero. And then backtrack to three and mark the status of three also as zero because there is no, there is no progress possible and you will have to backtrack. So when you are backtracking to zero, all the connections from zero have, have been explored. So you will have to mark the status of zero also as false, and you will have to come back to the calling function with a status false, because in the progress, we never came back to the vertex from where we have started. So since this is the case, there is no cycle in the graph. So you will have to remember one thing that if you have started your tool from one of the vertex, your status vertex or a status vector will have to be marked as zero for each of the connection. And then whenever you are visiting a vertex, you will have to set it as true. While backtracking, you will have to set it as zero. If you're coming back to the vertex from where you have started, started, then you will see the status of that vertex as one. And as soon as you see that, you will say that there is a cycle. And while exploring all the vertices, if you do not find such a situation ever, you will say that there is no cycle in the graph. Now let's see the code for So here is a code block code, wherein you first need to find out the adjacency list for the given graph. So I will have to ask the user to input the number of the vertices. And then we are taking the array of the adjacent array of the vector of size n. Then we are asking the user to input the number of the edges. And for each of the edges, we are entering, or we are asking the user to input the endpoint. If the edge is A to B, then in the adjacency list A, the entry will be there for B. If it were the undirected graph in that case, we would have made the entry of adj b dot pushback a as well because we are considering that if there is an edge from a to b there will be an edge from b to a as well but in the directed graph we are not doing so after this we are printing if our 
adjacency list is correct or not. So by this code, you can print. In the earlier lectures, you can see that how can we print the adjacency list for the given block. After this, we are calling a function cycle detection, and we are passing two parameters here. One is the adjacency list, and the other is the number of vertices in the graph. If the cycle detection algorithm returns one, it means that there is a cycle in the graph. If it returns zero, it means there is no cycle in the graph. So let's see the cycle detection algorithm. So here is the cycle de detection code in this uh, part or uh, the cycle detection function. The two, two elements or two parameters here are adjacency list and the number of vertices. We are checking, uh, we are setting up the status of the check as false. It means that there is no cycle. We are assuming that the, as of now, there is no cycle. As soon as we identify a cycle, this check will become true. So this is the status array. The size of the status vector or status array is n, and all the elements of this status have been initialized as zero. I have taken here as integer. You can take it as bool also, because bool will store true or false. Here we are assuming that one means true and zero means false. We have declared this as macro also, hash defined true as one and hash defined false as zero. In the cycle detection algorithm, you will have to see the connection from each of the vertex. Hence, this line or this loop, which starts from line number 26, is taking each of the vertex into consideration. So we have n vertices. The index numbers or the number of the uh, vertex number will vary from 0 to n minus 1. We are setting up, if, if we are starting our tour from i number vertex, then we, are, we, we will set the status of ith vertex as true. And we will see all the connections from this ith vertex. There is a function vertex visit, which will go in the depth. So we have to go in the depth from this connection. And if the depth returns or uh, the visiting in the depth returns one, it means that we have come back to the vertex from where we have started. Hence, there will be a cycle. Otherwise, there will not be a cycle. So I once I can repeat that, we have to start from each of the vertex. We will have to set it to status as true. It means visited. And then we will have to see each of the connection from that vertex. For each of the connect connected vertex, we are calling another function, which is vertex visit, which works more like the depth for search. And it will go in the depth and will set the status of each of the vertex in the depth as one. And while visiting, if, the, if, if we come back to the vertex from where we have started, then it will return true or one, otherwise it will return false. In case it has already returned one, we will return to the calling function as true because we have detected a cycle. But in case we have not detected a cycle, it means the check does not return one. It means we will have to start our tool from the next vertex. For starting our tool from the next vertex, you will have to set the status of the current vertex as false and then take the another vertex and then set its status as true. And then once again, explore all the connection from that vertex and call the vertex visit function, which will check the status as we do it in the depth first search. Now let's look at the vertex visit function, which is more or less same as the cycle detection. Here we are checking if the status of the currently visited vertex is already true. It means we have started our tool, tool from the vertex, which is true. It means we have detected a cycle, so return true. If not, then if not means if the status is false. So set it to status as true. And then a flag which has been initialized is false. Then look for all the connection from this ith vertex and call the same function in depth. And if this vertex visit function returns the true, it means there is a cycle. In which case this will return a true. If we are returning back to the same vertex from where we have started, it means the status of ith vertex is true. In some call, it means there is a cycle. So if this connection 
if all the connection explode connection somewhere give us a true value in the status vector it means that we have detected a cycle so return true but if not we have explored all the connections and we could not find a cycle anywhere then we will return a false now let's run this algorithm and check if it runs fine So here is our whiteboard. Let's take the graph from this whiteboard only. Let us input the graph. Here it says that enter the number of the vertices. So you can see that the number of vertices are five. Number of edges here are one, two, three, four, five, six. So the first first edge means the connection from zero. So there are two connections from zero, zero to two, and zero to three. From three, uh, uh, from one, there is only one connection, one to zero. From two, there is only one connection, two to one. From uh, three, there is only one connection, three to four. And from four, there is only one connection, four to zero. So you can see that here is the adjacency list, which is absolutely fine. And then it also says that there is a cycle in the graph. So a cycle exists in the graph. If you run the same algorithm or same code for this graph, this will return false. It means this does not contain a cycle. So I leave this on you. So thank you for watching this video. In the next lecture, we will meet with some other concept of the graph. Thank you.